Hello and welcome to the Pink Girly channel. This is Lori and I have agreed to join Maria from Maria's Miscellany YouTube channel in a collab with some other gals and Maria is calling this collab second oh hashtag second Saturday stash slash seven and this is Maria's YouTube channel and uh, what she's asked of us ladies who are joining in the collab is to provide her with a list of seven items and so maria is first up for the month of march and as we say it'll be the second saturday will you receive this and um videos from the other gals in the collab or i should say collab i'm not sure how i pronounce that anyhow um you will see their lists as the months progress. Maria is up first, and the list she has given us is a new item not yet used, an item you forgot that you had, some rickrack, ugly paper, fuzzy fabric, an old sticker, and something star shaped. Now you can use one, you can use two, you can use all seven. And I don't think Maria has given us a time element as far as, you know, staying within a certain amount of time to do your video, uh, but I'm going to try not to be too terribly long. Now, I will put more information in my description box, and as we get used to um, this little uh, collab um, as we, you know, continue down the road. But this is my first video, and I'm not quite sure where I'm going to head. But I do have a new item that I haven't used yet. And I have an item that I have forgotten I had. Now, I did use it this morning in a live stream, but I think that'll count because I really forgot I had them. Uh, I'm going to use ugly paper. And I might use an old sticker or something star-shaped. I'm not sure. I think Maria also has um, invited others to join in the collab. So you can do what we do. Use these items. Use some of them. Use them not. Contact Maria. And I think you can uh, upload your items that you've worked on or you've created uh, under this hashtag, hashtag second Saturday stash slash seven. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So my new item that I have not used is this Tim Holtz Sizzix folder. He's calling it a 3D texture fade. Uh, I have not used it at all. I just liked it because it looks like a crocheted doily. So this is the folder. So I went ahead and I pressed out or embossed, I guess I should say, that so I can work on that. Now, I'm thinking I can use this in a tag. I can use this as part of a journal page. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to use it. But I'm calling this my ugly paper. It really kind of is like a greenish tan. It's it's really not attractive. Now, I did make two impressions. And the one is a little better than the other. But they both came out pretty good. Now, I ran it through my genie. Uh, because I'm, I have my my plates have warped. I got rid of my big shot because it was so hard to store, and I just have a little cuddle bug, and uh, it's just I don't know. I need to replace my plates. I'm not quite. I bought several, and I always order the wrong thing, and I digress. Anyway, I ran it through my genie, and I think um, now there was the one that I thought maybe didn't get as good of an impression in the center, but now that I'm looking at them here I think they both look fairly good this one I got a little closer to the edge so I think I'm going to go ahead and use this embossed piece of paper <clears throat> so I've got two items from my list ugly paper and something new that I haven't used now the other item that I was thinking I would use are some acrylic glazes that I have in my stash that I forgot I had so I'm going to use those on this. I do have some rickrack, I believe, right behind me that I think I'm going to decorate 
some of this up with. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my glue gun because I might find that to be helpful. And the other thing I'm thinking I might use on Aria's list is an old sticker. Now, I guess you can interpret that two ways. Either old meaning vintage or you, you know, you, it's from created years ago or old. You had it in your stash for a while. And I know I have a bunch of different stickers here. And I'm just wondering if I might be able to incorporate a sticker of some kind here so I'm just kind of going to dig through this now this looks really cute but oh that's a Mother's Day sticker I don't think I want that but let me see what else I have in my little box of goodies here because I have this open space here. I'm thinking a sticker might look nice. Now, I don't think I want to do flowers, although I do love those stickers. I don't think that's going to work there. I thought maybe one of these might look kind of cool. So I just thought if I pull out a few of these things. Now, I have some rickrack, like I said, sitting behind me. And I got that in um, a grouping of things I purchased, I think, at the Goodwill. That kind of might work there. Or I could just go really crazy and do something really wild that would really kind of go with that crocheted kind of look. See, this is the box I store stickers in that... I really like and I kind of hoard. I know, I know. Well, isn't she darling? She kind of looks like she would go with some crocheted items. Let's see. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. Oh, he's adorable. Look at this. He looks like a he's a rabbit. I think he might be a little too large. Of course, I could trim that down. Well, he's a possibility, too. Let's take those two stickers and see if perhaps... Now, this is kind of cute, too, because it says Archaea's Seed Store. And, of course, these the crocheted image is flowers. So that might work too. Let's pull those three. Alrighty. Now get these back in their little goodie box. And I do forget that I had these too. So this kind of really could double as a sticker and a forgotten item. Because you know, when you hoard things, sometimes you forget what you have. <clears throat> All right. So I really want this to pop and I'm thinking I might use a little bit of perhaps some watercolor behind and just get some uh, additional color on here so let's see let's see what I have here that is convenient to pull out now of course I've got plenty of watercolor and a certain color is really not coming into my mind. I've got some little Jean Davenport tins. I kind of like the brown, especially if I'm thinking about using the rabbit. So maybe I'll just go ahead and see how this works. Now, remember, I have a second uh, imprint made. And at the ready. So if something should go terribly wrong... I can uh, use my second embossing. Now, I don't want to get that wet. But I'm thinking I'd like to use this brown color on this watercolor tin. Let's just do a little test. Well, that's really not giving me much color at all, is it? Now, I tipped into the green. I don't want that. Now, I'm not an expert with watercolor, 
But see, this one here is not really giving me any color. And I really like that. Let's pull a little pan out. Oh, this might be uh, this might be a metallic. Gosh, that's really not. I wonder if it has a coating on the top. I'm more of an acrylic girl. I have much more experience. Well, that is just not working for me. All right, so let's pop that back in its little container. Now, you want to remember, if you do wet some of your watercolors, I know that. You want to leave that open so they dry. You don't want them to get all moldy. Moldy. Let's see what else I have here. Well, let's try again. Let's try this. I'm looking for more of a tan, yellowy, gold kind of color. Oh, that's much better. I think that looks good. Okay, so this is another Jane Davenport tin. I wish Jane, if you're listening, <laughs> would print on the tin itself uh, what colors are in here because I'm not good at keeping my... little um what do you call it like your little um oh goodness me like your little key or your little swatch of what the colors are with the tin if that was right even the name of the set would be helpful to me So I'm just painting this in, just giving, and you can see my paper really is kind of ugly. And I just want to get down the crevices. So I have some color behind that little crocheted pattern that I embossed. And again, I'm just using the watercolor and this watercolor it's not permanent, like your ink tents. So I want to be mindful of that. Now that raised area of the um, embossing folder is kind of looking crazy to me. It's um. Ah, look what I did. I picked up something else on my brush. I think perhaps my brush be too big. We're going to work with it. We're going to work with it. Now, ideally... I'm going to get a background here. Now, really, um, to think ahead, if I was doing this again, and of course, if I was doing it not recording, you could really paint your paper first and then let it dry. Use your heat gun or give it some time to dry and then put it in your folder and do your uh, embossing. But, because I'm doing the video, I didn't think to do that. Now, I want to get in here pretty well, because I want this to really look like a background, that perhaps I have my doily, if you will. I'm not even sure. I think I just called it a 3D folder. I'm not sure he really gives this particular folder a name other than texture fades. All right. So 
So I'm just trying to work my watercolor paint into all those little crevices. And I add a little more water to the top of my <clears throat> little mixing tray on this watercolor set. I see already my my paint to make this look a lot less ugly. Maybe I'll kind of stripe this a little bit. I'm we'll using a little bit more of my paint. Just got that a little more. And I think I'm going to go a little heavier down the side. Now, the thing I didn't know, I don't know about this collab, and I guess I should have asked Maria. Um, and I can do that, but I haven't, I haven't really thought about it. I was just thinking, oh, I've got to get this ready for her. I'm assuming I can use other things like the watercolor and not just the seven items. Now my paint, now this is just cardstock, so it's not watercolor paper. And so I am getting a little bit of the warping on the paper, which really does not bother me. All right, I'm going to rinse my brush, make sure I get all that paint out. Now I'm going to use my heat gun. I'll just dry this up a little bit. You can see where it did soak through. Because when you press it through your folder, and you emboss, it weakens the paper. It didn't cut through it, but it definitely weakens it. Now, as I'm drying this, this is straightening straighten out a little bit. If I try it on the flip side. Now, what I think I want to do is I think I want to come back in and get a little more intensified with that color and a little more intentional around my doily print. And then I think what I can do is add more water to my brush and kind of fade this out. You know, I'm right-handed, and silly me, I should have my paint on my right-hand side instead of crossing over. That's a helpful tip. If you're left-handed, keep your paint tray on your left side. If you're right-handed, keep it on your right. Now, I must say, I do enjoy, like, the country gold color. I just want this crocheted embossed folder to really pop out a little bit here. Now, if I was going to make this into a tag, it would be a little, really a pretty large tag. <clears throat> but I'm thinking I could probably use it as a pocket on a journal page. And certainly I could use it as the front of a card. Now I'm going to put some water, I put some more water on my brush, might be a little too much, and I'm going to try to fade this into the paper so I have um, not a distinct line, just kind of a shaded dark, darkened area. around my 
image. Now here I missed a couple of spots, so I'm going to come back in and just hit those slightly. Now, what else is on our list? An item that you have forgotten. Right, I'm going to hit this with my heat gun. Now, items that I forgot that I had, they still have a pretty distinct line. Maybe when I dry, but I'll fill them up a little bit. Just So I forgot I had the acrylic glazes. They're called silks. I purchased some supplies from a lady who was switching gears and going into a different direction artistically. And she sold me some of her things she wasn't going to be using anymore. And some of them are art glazes. And I think this color might work. Let's just see. So this is the brand. It's called Silks. I'm not sure if you can get them anymore. And it's an ac acrylic glaze. And they probably are drying out uh, a little bit. But I'm going to put some in the lid, my lid here. And I'm going to try to dry brush some of this glaze on top of my image here. You know what? I can probably use that right off of my, my knife. Now, when I dry brush ceramic pieces, I use a stiffer bristled brush because what I want to do is I want to capture the paint on the top surface, not down in the crevices. Does that make sense? So like if you were doing a, a rabbit or a dog or a cat or something very textured, a very textured piece, you would just hit the color on the top, not down in the deep recesses of say like the animal fur, the animal skin. And so this is very textured and looks like a crocheted doily. So I'm going to try, actually I probably should try it on my um, piece I'm not using. Let's put that one aside. Let's use this piece just to see if I can get it to work the way that I want. Now, I think I'm going to try an old bristly brush because it's more flat and not pointed. Some of the newer brushes I bought really have a point. Now, with the dry brushing, you really kind of work most of the product out and you just use a light hand and go over the, the top surface. So I think it's going to work pretty well. So, and I think the coloring is going to work pretty well with what I've got going on here. So let me reload my brush. I'm going to take a lot of that off. And I'm just going to use a very light stroke. Now remember, I dried my paper. That was quite wet with watercolor. And I'm just trying to make this embossing folder, the crocheted doily part, if you will, kind of just pop out and look. 3D. Now some of my color is going down behind, but for the most part I'm capturing just the top edge. 
see if you can see that. It looks kind of cool. So I'm going to go into the lid of my glaze here and grab a little more. And I'm just kind of really taking off a lot of that paint, that glaze, I should say. So I just have a little bit on my brush and I'm just catching the top edge of that embossed image. So I did mention Rick Rack. I purchased, I think, something at Goodwill. I had a whole bag of stuff. I'm so, I'm so um, intrigued by some of the bags of stuff that you get, like Goodwill and places like that, because it's just got a mishmash of stuff, and you never know what you're going to find. <laughs> so this particular little bag of goodies had all kinds of fibers. And a lot of them looked vintage to me, so I just got it. And lo and behold, when I went through, when I got home and went through it, it had some white rickrack that looked vintage and had some character to it. It wasn't just white, white. I thought, ooh, it's going to look good in a couple of projects. Some of my brush hairs are coming off. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of this. Now, this is on a flat surface, but I'm just going to carry a little bit of this color over here on this corner of my card. Just to kind of bring that together. Now, let's see. Let me put this up. And see if I can show you. Can you really can you see how that's turning out? See, and then I added some of that up here. Alright, so I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna cap this back up. Acrylic glaze. Lovely. Now, what else was on Maria's list? Okay, the Rick Rack, old sticker. I'm not sure about a star-shaped item. I think I'm just gonna let well enough alone. Now I have to decide, do I want to use the rabbit? And I pulled out this little gal. She would look sweet on there, right? Or this. I kind of like that. Hmm. <laughs> Although if I if I took that brown, let's do this. Let's let's give this a good a good look. See here, if I take this postage stamp looking portion off of this sticker, I might like it a little better. Let's just see. Of course, I'm not cutting that as straight as I would like. <clears throat> I'm not a straight cutter. I'm a straight shooter, not a straight cutter. It's still a little large. I like the words, and I really um, like <clears throat> the word hair. Maybe I can fussy cut this a little bit. It kind of looks cool. Maybe a little. I hate to lose those. Maybe I'll just... I think I kind of like that. <clears throat> now, the trick is finding 
the edge to pull the sticker off. And I usually use my X-Acto knife. Now, don't worry. I usually am pretty good at this. I've not been injured, but if you can get your knife between those two layers, I'm going to put I'm going to put on my stronger glasses here. Now I have a little exacto knife that I usually use. It's not like this, and it has a pointier tip, and it's usually a little easier to use. And I'm just hoping that I'm not making anybody nervous. I did slice that a little bit. Did I get it? Usually this works like a charm for me. Well, you know, nothing really works the same if you're recording yourself. I got it. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to pop this down here. I did take a corner off, but that's all right. Now, let me take my I have this old um, knitting needle that I use <clears throat> to stir paint, do a couple different things, but it's got this little round wooden edge, and I'm going to just press that down. Give that little sticker a good press, right? Okay. Now, another item that I did just recently purchase, and I haven't used it a lot, but I did use it, is this and Marie, I hope I'm doing this okay because I am adding other things that aren't on the list. But this is called Vintage Antiquing Paste. And uh, it's put out by Stamparia. It's oil-based, I've come to learn. But it gives you a really nice finish as far as inking your edges. Now, if I can grab a, <clears throat> a blending tool here. I've used the brush. I'm not good at using the brush and blending. I'm much, much better using the inking pad. So I think I'd like to have some darkness around the outside edge of my card. So I'm just going to, and this has a little plastic piece that seals your tube for you there. So I'm just going to work this in to my blending tool. And I'm just going to come around the edge. And just deepen this color up so we can real ah look girls. I'm assuming girls are watching. I should say fellow artisans. I went right to the piece instead of working it on my scrap paper here. But it didn't turn out too badly. Phew. All right, now I want to also get my Rick Rack on here, so don't let me forget. Let's work some more of this in. Now, don't forget, you can do this too on your own and then upload your project. Of course, I'm not good at all this um, technical stuff. But Maria could certainly help you. 
Now I'm going to come right up around the little rabbit. And I'm going to get some of that paste and blend across the top. So far, I'm thinking it looks pretty cute. Nothing like admiring your own work. I'm going to cap up my antiquing paste. Now this sized antiquing paste tube is uh, going to last you probably a lifetime, if not longer. <laughs> All right, let me find my rickrack. I do have it in the basket right behind me, but I tend to move things. I rummage through and do project, project to project. Let's see. Rick rack. Gosh, I hope it's in here. This is my bag of goodies. Oh, I've got all this different stuff in. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Look at that. Rick Rack. Size 37. McCoy, Jones and Company from Chicago. It's looking to see if it has a, a price on it, but I don't see one. Looks vintage, right? Three odds. All right. So I'm thinking... A little bit of this rip rack, and of course, I'm going to save that label. For another journal. Look how great that is, huh? Woohoo! Bonus. All right, now where's the end? Now, normally, I probably would use my Fabri-Tac to glue this down. And that does stick pretty quickly. But. Because I'm doing a video, I think I'm going to go ahead and use my hot glue. And I'm thinking I want to put a piece here. On the edge. And then I think I want to put a little strip across the top. And then maybe a little piece across the top. I don't want to cover up those words. I really like those words. So let me snip this little piece. Okay. Now that's looking very bright. I don't think I want to put the vintage antiquing solution on because that was really dark. But perhaps I could put a different... Um, a different color. How about some gathered twig? I think some gathered twig might work to just um, so it's not so um, I like to knock the color back if you will. So it's not so bold of a white. Even though it's old. Now I'm looking for a piece of my and I'm not finding it. This is a different, I wonder if any of the color comes off of this. Oh, this isn't too bad, maybe a little bit. This is a piece of foam that's got a tighter foam backing on it. I forget what they call it. 
it's got a certain name but i'm using the uh distress oxide and i'm going to do this not on top of my piece but on top of my yeah this is good just knocking the color back a little tiny bit and i'm going to glue this on using my hot glue So I've got the little piece I'm going to put up there. So I'm just going to put a little thread, hopefully, of hot glue right along the top. And then I want to make sure I have my inked oxide side up. that a press and then I'm going to run some down the side here I rick got a little curled there when I put that oxide on it <clears throat> I think I think I think so again I'm going to put a little of hot glue and like I said if I wasn't doing a video and I had time for this to dry and stay in place I would probably in all likelihood use my Fabri-Tac for this now I'm thinking I can add this right into a journal I could glue down three sides and use it for a pocket. I could use it for a card front. Of course, I could sit this under a couple of books and let that flatten out a little bit. But I think I'm going to call that done. I really like it. All right. So for the hashtag second Saturday stash slash seven, Maria's items were... A new item that you have not used, an item you forgot you had, some rickrack, ugly paper, fuzzy fabric, an old sticker, and something star-shaped. So what I decided to use was ugly paper, which is what we started out with. I used an embossing folder that was new to me that I hadn't used yet. That's where I got my crocheted doily look. And then I used my acrylic glaze to highlight the top edge of that doily i forgot i had those i used my rick rack and i used an old sticker meaning it's a sticker i've had in my stash for a while so there you have it i hope you join us on the collab don't forget if you have not subscribed please do and especially check out Maria, Maria's Miscellany channel on YouTube. And then look for our second installment, April 9th, I believe it is, when our next installment of hashtag second Saturday stash slash seven will be available to view. So thanks for joining me. Don't forget. I believe all the different ladies involved with this collab will be in the direction box or description box, I should say, below. And follow around and watch everybody and see what items they use for Maria's list and what they did with them. Thanks again for joining me. This is Lori from the Pink Gorilla channel, and I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget, take time to be creative and enjoy the journey. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.